Today's topic is slope. Uh, hopefully by the end of this video you will be able to say I know what is meant by slope of a line and how it relates to the rate of change of a relationship. Uh, so we're talking right now about slope as a rate of change and I'm going to give you a few uh, facts about slope and then we're going to have a look at uh, some situations that you might encounter slope in. So first of all, number one, Slope is the steepness of a line. Number two, slope compares how far up a line goes, its vertical distance, to how far over it goes, its horizontal distance. Number three, slope can be calculated by using rise over run, and it's given the symbol M. Slope can be negative if the line goes down as you look from left to right. Number five, slope is larger for lines that are steeper. And counter to that, it's smaller for lines that are less steep. And the last little bit of information, slope is the rate of change in a relationship. So knowing that, we are going to have a look at a few different ways of calculating slope or knowing about slope on a graph. So here's a graph and we want to calculate the slope of this line. Now the first thing we're going to do when you're given a line on a graph, the first thing you're going to do, step one, is to locate two points on the line. Now we want them to be right on the line. So this looks like a good point. And now I want another one that's right on the line. Uh, let's say this one down here looks to be right on the line. So I've located two points that are right on the line that I've given there. Step two says draw or imagine, if you're looking at your textbook, you don't want to actually draw. Draw or imagine a right triangle between these two points with the line as the hypotenuse. So I'm going to draw on this vertical, or sorry, this horizontal arm of the right triangle and then up to the vertical of the right triangle there. So now I've got a right triangle here and the line, seg or the line that we were given is the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Step three, determine the lengths of the vertical, which is the rise, and the horizontal, which is the run of the arms of the triangle. So let's look at the rise. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's got a rise of eight. And the run is the horizontal arm is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So the run is 13. So now what do we do with those? Step four, calculate slope by using rise divided by run. So in this case, rise divided by run is 8 divided by 13 and we can leave that as 8 divided by 13 or we can change that into its decimal equivalent of 0 0.62 approximately. So either leave it as the fraction 8 thirteenths or change it to approximately 0.62. Okay. So that's how you find it on a graph. Uh, we're going to do that again for these two graphs uh, and there's a little note up here. So let's see what this note says. The note says if the line slopes down, the rise is negative. Uh, so what we're referring to there is the red line that's right here. Um, so I'm going to find two points on this red line. Uh, there's that point there. And this point here. There, I've got two points on that red line. Now, it slopes down, so our rise is negative. So, we're going to look at the red line first. And remember, slope equals rise 
overrun. And let's draw in our little right triangle. It's kind of messy, but you can see it. There's the right triangle. The rise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, is seven. But since it goes down, it's a negative seven. And the run is one, two, three, four, five. So we got a run of five. So the slope of this line is negative seven fifths. And once again, you can leave it as negative 7 fifths, or you can turn it into negative 1.4 in its decimal equivalent. Now, let's take a look at the green line. Uh, once again, we have to find two points on the green line. There's one that it's directly on, and I think this one here, it's directly on. So if I draw in my little right triangle here, we'll take a look, and the rise is only 1. And it's definitely a positive one this time uh, because this line is slanting upwards. And the run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the run is 6. So if we're going to take a look at the green line, again, we're calculating slope. And slope is calculated as rise over run. And in this case, our rise is 1, and our run is 6. And if I want that as its decimal equivalent, that is 0 0.17 approximately. Now, we're going to take a look at finding slope from a table of values. Um, but we're going to look at um, what it looks like between the table of values and the graph. So we're going to start by creating a table of values. Um, so create a table of values for the relation y equals negative 3x plus 5. So when we create a table of values, we choose values for x and sub them into x in here, and then do the math to figure out what the y is. So for x, uh, I usually like to choose um, the five numbers that surround 0. Um, since 0 is my origin point, I want to keep them around centered. Now, to figure out what the y-coordinates are going to be for this table of values, I'm going to stick that negative 2, this negative 2, in where the x is. And then I need to do the math. So, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, and then I add 5, which is positive 11. Now, I'm going to stick in negative 1 instead of the x in this uh, equation. And when I do that, negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3 plus 5 is positive 8. And so what I have here are two points that I'm going to graph. I have the point negative 2 comma 11 and I have the point negative 1 comma 8. Uh, we're going to do this one more time because 0 is so easy. Negative 3 times 0 plus 5 equals, and negative 3 times 0 is just 0, and then we add 5 to it, so we get 5. Now by this point, you should be able to see a pattern. It looks like as I go from 11 to 8, I go down 3 spaces. As I go from 8 to 5, I'm going down 3 spaces. So now to carry on that pattern, I'm just going to subtract 3 from 5 and get 2, and then subtract 3 from 2, and get negative 1. So now I have all of these points. This is the point 0, 5, the point 1, 2, and the point 2, negative 1. And we're going to put them on this graph. So that's just a little review of making a table of values. Uh, so negative 2, 11, I can't actually put on because this graph only goes to 10. So I'm going to go negative 1 and 8 is right there. 0 and 5 is right there. Uh, 1 and 2 is right there. And 2, negative 1 is right there. So now I have all the points that I'm going to put on my graph. And as you can see, they do look like they're forming a nice straight line. So I'm going to draw on that line.
and there we have it. So now I want to um, find the slope of that because it says create a table of values, graph it, and then use the table and the graph to determine the slope. So the first thing we're going to do is do it on the graph because we already know how to do that. I'm going to, between two of these lines, I'm going to draw my little right triangle. And there's one, two, three spaces for our rise. But remember, the line's going down, so that's negative three and then one for the run. So that looks like our slope is negative three. So m equals rise over run, which in this case is negative three over one, which is simply negative three. Now we can do that from the table of values as well, and I've got the steps for doing it from the table of values. Uh, step number one, is determine the change in the y's. And what I mean by the change in the y's, and I'm just going to get rid of these point descriptors here. Um, what I mean by the change in the y's is that um, as I go from 11 to 8, I'm going down 3, down 3, and then carrying on, still down 3, down 3. So the change in the y's is the same thing as the rise. Step two, determine the change in the x's. Well, we actually set the change in the x's when we found, um, when we put the x's in. But as you look at it, it's one, 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 one. And so the change in the x's can actually be considered the run. And now as our step three, we're going to calculate slope as the change in the y over the change in the x, which is basically still just rise over run. So slope in this case equals negative three over one, which is simply negative three. And so if you're finding it from a table, these are the steps you're going to follow. But as you notice, you basically get to the same spot as you did in the uh, graph. So finding slope from a relationship, we're going to do this fairly quickly. Uh, Bell Canada has a monthly cell phone plan that costs $10 plus $0.05 cents per text message. Uh, the independent variable in this case is how many text messages you're going to send. Um, so that's the number of texts. It's independent. You don't know. You you set that. You can decide what you want, how many you want uh, to send in a month. The dependent variable is the cost. Cost actually depends on how many text messages you send. You send more text messages, you're going to get more cost. So the dependent variable is the cost. So we're going to make a table of values up to 100 text messages. Now we're not going to go one text message at a time. That would be silly. Um, so we've got texts here and cost here. So we're going to start with zero text messages and then go up by 20. So if we send 20 texts, uh, 40 texts, 60, 80, 100. So this is the cost up to 100 text messages. Now if we look back at the question, it said that the cell phone plan is $10 and then $0.05 cents a text message. So if I send no text at all, I still owe that $10. Now at five cents a text message, 20 text messages are going to cost me a dollar because 20 times five cents equals one dollar. So every time I go up by 20 text messages, my cost is going to increase by one dollar. So when I send 20 text messages, it's going to cost me eleven dollars. Forty will be twelve because I went up another 20 text messages. Uh, 60 will be 13, 14, 15, and so on. Now we're going to use the approach that we did before to find out uh, what the slope of this line would be if I graphed it. 
So if I graph this line and I wanted to calculate what the slope was, remember we have to figure out what the y's go up by, and that gives us our rise, and we have to figure out what the x's go up by, and that will give us our runs. So we set what the x's went up by. We decided they were going up by 20. And when we made our calculations, we saw that pattern there was it actually went up by one. So the slope is rise over run, or the change in y. And in math, we actually use this little triangle to represent the word change. The change in y over the change in x, which in this case is 1 over 20, which if we put that uh, as a decimal, it's 0 0.05. Now, notice that this was actually our unit rate in the cost per text. And that is actually uh, another of the relationship for slope. The slope of a line gives us the unit rate of the relationship. And we'll end it.